So in today's video, I'm going to talk about all the areas in Norfolk with character, house character. That's what we want, right? We want those cool neighborhoods that are real unique. So we're going to focus on all the spots in Norfolk that have that character coming up. Hey, my name is Sam Sansalone and I'm a real estate agent in the Hampton Roads area. And that goes from Virginia Beach and through Williamsburg and beyond. And I do videos every week about living and moving to the area. So I get a lot of people asking me about, Sam, I want to find the neighborhoods that have the character of Norfolk, the old, nice, walkable streets, the architecture uh, of really vintage, older houses, the tree-lined streets, the colonial vibes, all those old school feels that you just can't replicate nowadays. So today we're going to talk about 10 neighborhoods that I think have the most character uh, in Norfolk and have that style of vibe that you know, really is, again, irreplaceable uh, and very hard to find. So we'll go through the map. I'll give you my 10 neighborhoods that I think are the best and have the most character in them personally. Uh, and character can mean different things to different people, right? It could be the streets. It could be the uh, the neighborhood. It could be the trees. It could be uh, the houses. What I'm going to do is talk about different neighborhoods, but also different types of neighborhoods that might have different types of character in them. Uh, so number one is we're going to start in the southwestern side of Norfolk in the near downtown area. And I'll show you its neighborhood that you've probably heard of before. If you've looked into Norfolk at all called Ghent and West Ghent. Now these are, I'd say the classic character neighborhoods that you really can't find much many other places in in Hampton Roads and now if you look on the map you'll see that it's it's a pretty decent size uh, part of this part of Norfolk if you look there's downtown Norfolk right here going further north and west right over here this is Ghent Ghent Square uh, you got West Ghent over here it's a pretty large area here uh, just as as you go from 21st Street down uh, towards the water you've got different styles uh, this one has I think the, the largest assortment of different characters uh, houses like like you've got called Colonial Revival of, uh, and also Classic Revival. Uh, you've got a Victorian. There are Tudors in here. There are Spanish like Haciendas that are sprinkled through the area. So there are a lot of different styles in here. But as you go into different parts of the neighborhoods, you'll find more of different styles. So, for example, if you go towards The Hague, which is down south, uh, closer to the water, you'll find a little bit more uniqueness. Um, now, as you go further inland, you might find some that are a little bit newer, like some in Gent Square, for example, built in the, in the 70s in the 80s more traditional uh, but they try and still preserve the feel of that colonial old school atmosphere and so it's not totally like all looks looks new but it has that still that old vibe to it it's just has they're just newer houses so that's over in Ghent Square and then if you go over to West Ghent I think West Ghent is one of the most underrated parts of Hampton Roads because uh, it has the same walkable atmosphere as Ghent uh, but it also has restaurants in the same neighborhood like uh, Orapax, which is a, a Greek restaurant. Some breweries, Smart Mouth uh, Brewing is in West Ghent in an area called Chelsea. You got Benchtop Brewing. There's Torch, which is a nice restaurant there. And also one of the best places to have a beer in the country. And I think I've even seen lists of one of the best places to have a beer in the world is the Birch, which is also in this section here. And so I've gone here so many times to just hang out. Uh, you can play play game, long games in some of these uh, places. You can walk from restaurant to restaurant. Restaurant. There's a new wine garden called Grand Flora also there too. So it's not a very large area. Uh, and you can also get there from the rest of West Ghent, which has a lot of these same colonial style houses. Not It won't take too long. You've got parks in the, on the, the further north part of, of West Ghent. So this area is great and underrated. You can, get, you can get houses in West Ghent a little bit cheaper than what you can get in the traditional part of Ghent. Now Ghent itself, you can walk to restaurants pretty easily as well. Collie Avenue, Colonial Avenue, 21st Street, three main streets that have restaurants restaurants, bars, uh, uh, boutique shops, coffee shops, all through there. Plenty of restaurants I think are fantastic. One of my favorite coffee, sh coffee shops is Stella, which is on Colonial Avenue, which is near where I used to live. A lot of great, great restaurants that are just plenty you can frequent all through uh, Ghent and north the north side of Ghent. Now, the prices in West Ghent are going to be anywhere from the fives upwards of over a million dollars, but you'll see, you'll see more houses in the sixes and sevens than you will in Ghent, traditional Ghent. Ghent, you'll see them in the sixes and sevens, but even more so we're going to be in the eights and over a million in uh, more more cases uh, now Ghent square is a nice little pivot because you can get townhouses and row houses in Ghent square uh, for around 450 to 525 550 uh, and so again the prices go up from there but you'll find more options there if you want to be uh, on that side of Ghent. You've got walkable elements you got green space you got restaurants you've got all the, the nice vibes that you 
really can't replicate anywhere else in Hampton Roads uh, to this degree. Now we're going to shift our attention further north, just further north in an area called Park Place. Now if you've seen on the map, you'll see a lot of spots in this side have a lot of character. Park Place is a good a spot that people often ask questions about. Okay, what's going on with Park Place, Sam? Because it's just n north of Ghent. It's right near Ghent, a few blocks away. What about here? Uh, well, Park Place is a lot cheaper, and it's a lot cheaper for several reasons. It's got a lot of older houses. It has not been upkept as well as you would say compared to Ghent. Uh, now it goes into like the low twenties streets, like close to close to Ghent, further up into the thirties and thirty six, seventh, and eighth street. This whole section here is what you would consider Park Place. Now, as you go further uh, east, you'll see again it, the, the vibe changes a little bit, uh, and as you go further south, you'll see more industrial uh, parts of town. But that's where you'll you're starting to see more brewery pop up more coffee shops O'Connor Brewing has been there for a while like newer restaurants are starting to pop up on the south and the bottom side of Park Place again the question is what will happen with the rest of Park Place will that follow suit with the rest of the bottom part of Park Place and the answer is I don't know and how fast you might find you can get an, an older house in Park Place cheaper uh, but will it be the same vibe as Ghent Again, that's where you'll you'll start seeing differences, uh, and the prices in Park Place, prices in Park Place are going to be anywhere from like you can get them in the three hundreds, uh, maybe even cheaper than that sometimes, but really three hundreds and four hundreds, and sometimes you'll bump into higher ranges, but there's some some of those are larger, but three four hundred thousand dollar price range, you'll find a lot of spots in Park Place, um, and that if you go further north from there is Colonial Place. So Colonial Place is just north of Park Place, and the, the difference or the line between both of them is about 38th Street. If you go further into 38th Street, beyond 38th Street, uh, you'll find all the spots in, Col in Colonial Place, like all the state streets are in Colonial Place. And so you've got water access, not deep water access, but views along the sides of the, of the, the neighborhood, same style houses, Victorian, uh, craftsmen. These, this uh, neighborhood has a lot of what's considered called kit homes which were back then, they were actually built by Sears as one. And also Aladdin was a, 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 was a company that built these kit homes and they were a kit. You could order them and they would come as a kit. They don't look any different than other houses. You would never know that they were kit homes, uh, but you know these Victorian craftsman style houses, they're very commonly uh, kit homes in this area. So you got some small little parks in here, more traffic circles, dog parks. One of the drawbacks to Colonial Place on the Eastern side or on this side right over here is that you'll find that uh, the areas, especially on the exterior, need flood insurance for the most part, especially over on this side. You'll find some spots that will, uh, even in on days that the water doesn't, or that there's no rain, you'll see water sometimes that will come over and, and cover Llewellyn Avenue in this whole area over here. So that, that can be an issue depending on where you are in, in Colonial Place. But you'll see a difference between what's in Colonial Place and what's in Park Place and what's in Ghent. They're different vibes, different parts of town. Colonial Place, now you're starting to see more in the 350, 400 range into the five and six range, as especially if you get closer to the water. So you'll find a difference in price as well between the Park Place and Colonial Place right here. As we shift our attention further uh, west, as you go uh, past Old Dominion University, there's a neighborhood just north of there, which you may have heard of, called Larchmont and Edgewater. There's two neighborhoods uh, kind of next to each other combined. I love Larchmont and Edgewater. It feels very quiet, relaxed. Um, it's tree-lined streets, some sidewalks. You'll see more sidewalks in Larchmont and Edgewater. Uh, now, you'll see more of these craftsman style, Victorian style. Uh, you'll see a colonial revival like we talked about before. So the ones that you'll, you'll, you'll expect in these older uh, parts of town, you'll see a lot of them in Larchmont. Now, not all of Larchmont and Edgewater are the same or feel the same. As you get closer to the water, you'll see some spots that, you know, you might see some flood insurance issues as you get closer to the north side and, and, and around the, uh, the water side near, you know, even close to Hampton Boulevard in some spots. But it's not all like that. And the further south you go, closer to Old Dominion, you don't see many spots that need flood insurance at all. Another cool benefit to being in Larchmont is you can literally walk to SB Ballard Stadium, which is where Old Dominion, the Monarchs, play football. So you can watch the football games and walk over there too. But you are close to Old Dominion, so there are there's more activity in the Old Dominion side. Uh, so that could be another drawback. You'll find more uh, college rentals as you get closer to the, the school. But I love the neighborhood. I love the vibe. I love the trees. I love the character that you find in Larchmont and Edgewater. And I think a lot of people, because of the prices, you kind of see that that's the case with a lot of people too, because the prices are going to be starting in the 300s, but most are going to be in the four, five, six, and up. 700, 
over a million dollars, you can see along the water some awesome properties in Larchmont, but I'd say most of them are going to be between five and seven fifty. Not factoring in flood insurance, which could be a factor in a lot of these places. Now, going further north across the Lafayette River Bridge, you'll get to a couple more neighborhoods I want to mention, which is number one is Lock Haven, which is on the uh, just west, if you're looking at the map, uh, of Hampton Boulevard, uh, which is close to the Norfolk Navy base. This whole section right here um, is small, but it still has these similar style houses that you might see in Ghent or in Larchmont that for the prices, 550, 650 into the sevens, you'll see some larger ones, especially closer to the Hermitage, which nice water views along North Shore, Shore Road, for example. Uh, but you're going to be paying a little bit more to be in this neighborhood uh, as opposed to places like Colonial Place, for example. Um, but some of these houses are also bigger. Now, if you're going to be stationed at Norfolk Navy base, you are so close. You're like six, seven minutes away uh, from uh, the base if you're in Lock Haven. Now you go further east on the map from Lock Haven. There's some cool little nooks and crannies uh, away from Hampton Boulevard. You don't even know that these places are here. The main neighborhood is Algonquin and next to it is also Riverfront and Meadowbrook. These sections over here uh, are some of the biggest diamonds in the rough in Norfolk because they just, they're just, you don't really pay attention to them. You don't think that they're there. You drive right by them. Uh, lots of nature, lots of trees. The houses are kind of set back. You don't even know some of these houses are there. These houses are like really unique, like kind of random. The lots are very random. Prices in here are going to be getting anywhere from the four or 500,000 price range, but you'll see a lot in the sixes, eights, and especially on the water, you'll see them over a million dollars plus very easily. One of the drawbacks to here though is because you are kind of tucked away in a corner, you're also relatively close to a main road called Little Creek Road, which is kind of just an industrial, kind of commercial, I say, commercial street, kind of busy, kind of annoying to be near that street in my opinion just because it's so busy and just it's an older street just not an aesthetically pleasing spot in my opinion compared to as you go into the Algonquin riverfront part of town now again if you're, you're getting stationed at the Norfolk Navy base you're pretty close to there now in the next one if you notice we're kind of going a little bit east kind of going in a big circle uh in this part of Norfolk it's just further south from uh Algonquin coming around the bend down Granby Street is a neighborhood called Talbot Park. Now Talbot Park right here, uh, just off of Granby Street, this is one of my favorites because it does not has a lot of spots that don't require flood insurance. Big plus. It also is a little bit lower price. So you, for the for the houses, you can get a house in here in the fours and fives, as opposed to maybe paying six or more in in uh, Larchmont, for example, and no flood insurance. Uh, so there's some in here that are smaller, but 2,000, 2,500 square feet is pretty normal. 3,000 square feet is some, in some cases. It's in an area that feels like uh, you're still in the the area that has a lot of character, like Ghent but you're not actually in it. So it's, it's close, but you can't really walk there. That's a, one drawback that doesn't make it, makes it less expensive in my opinion. Uh, but otherwise, I'd say some really easy access points, you're close to the interstates, you're close to Granby Street, you're still close to Ghent, you're just not right in it. Now, but if you go across the street, this is one that's a little bit different. The, the character in these types of houses, a little bit newer. We're talking about mid-century modern in some cases, and it's called Suburban Acres. Suburban Acres is on the other side of Granby Street, uh, but it's kind of tucked away. You don't really even know it's there. It's not a very, very huge neighborhood, but you can get a house in here in the threes and fours in the fives, uh, and a lot more ranches you'll see in here, sprawling ranches. Again, mid-century modern, a little bit larger lot sizes you'll see in some of these spots because of these ranches. Uh, and again, you're pretty ac accessible to the same types of things, uh, but the prices are going to be a little bit lower in here, which is why I like it as well. So if you want some unique character, not the old colonial character, but maybe newer MCM possibilities are more frequent in here. Uh, if you want that type of thing, I would check out Suburban Acres. That general area has a lot for what you're looking for, especially if you want to get a little bit lower in price range. You'll find some that are on the water, but not too many. You'll find every once in a while, you'll see some along the Wayne Creek, which is just below a Suburban Park. Now, going further south from there, this is another interesting spot that I think is worth considering if you want something also staying in the price ranges of the fours and fives, sometimes threes, and also that colonial vibe that is not in the same price range as for example uh, Ghent and in places near there which is Lafayette Residence Park. Now Lafayette Residence Park is this area right here. You see Lafayette Winona. Winona is just north of there. There's some spots that need flood insurance in there. I'm not as big of a fan but it's that same general area. This area was designed and had street names with French 
uh, uh, names and French design streets like they curved a bit more. You'll see a lot of weird, unique turn twists and turns uh, in Lafayette Residence Park. Now, some of these spots may have some flood insurance along the water, along the Lafayette River, but it's not going to be all of them. Um, you'll see some spots that are a little bit kind of more run down as you go further south, kind of like just below uh, this, the Lafayette Boulevard here in Tidewater Drive. These, these are some spots if you want like a smaller ranch style, like a craftsman style house, like even in the like low threes, upper twos maybe, you can find them down here. You can walk across down towards, there's a dog park over there near the water. You can walk towards there. That's right on the water on the Lafayette River. So very cool vibe. Now, interesting factoid is Lafayette Boulevard, right? This, this street right here is it connects to Tidewater and 26th Street. This was an old streetcar uh, route. And so now it's become a street, but before it was a streetcar. And you'll find that once the streetcars were developed, uh, in Norfolk, and it was made a, a possibility to go further out of downtown Norfolk way back in the 1900s. Once the streetcar became a thing, that's when you started seeing more neighborhoods being built further into the 1900s because you can go further away from downtown Norfolk to live. And so you see more streetcar neighborhoods. And Lafayette Boulevard is a good example of a street that was a streetcar street uh, that got people into these parts of town away from downtown. Now let's shift our attention further south back into downtown in a neighborhood called Freemason. And Freemason, I think, is one of the most historic parts of Norfolk or anywhere in Hampton Roads. If you look at downtown Norfolk, zoom in, on the uh, western side, this section right over here, just near, near Brambleton, this corner over here is some of the coolest parts of town that you'll see. It's considered the Freemason Historic District, but it's got cobblestone streets in some spots. It's only a few blocks, but it's got water views, it's got a lot more row houses in here, more condos that were con you know, converted condos. Uh, but it's that old architecture, even still some trees that you'll see, even though there's a bunch of concrete and a bunch of cobblestones and it's paid, you'll still see a lot of character and old, old growth trees uh, in Freemason. Cool coffee shops in here. You can walk to The Cure, which is uh, kind of close to the water. I love The Cure. A couple good restaurants in here too. Omar, Omar's Carriage House, which is fantastic. You can get in and around Freemason. You can walk even to downtown Norfolk pretty easily too if you, if you, if you so choose. Getting down into the Waterside District, you can get close to there. And so the accessibility here is fantastic. The water uh, views are really great. It's also the one on this list that gets you the closest to downtown, or actually you're kind of in downtown if you're in Freemason. So you got the most access to that spot, which I think opens up a lot of doors for restaurants, shops, more of a nightlife atmosphere, like even near Waterside or even uh, the concert venues like the Norva, which is uh, along Granby Street, which is one of my favorite places to see a concert. So Great, some great spots in downtown, and Freemason is right down the street from that. The best part to me about this neighborhood is, separate from the buildings themselves and the architecture, is the cobblestone streets, because that is almost, I don't think you can find another spot like it anywhere in Hampton Roads. So I hope this is helpful. If you have any other questions about living in Norfolk or the rest of the Hampton Roads area, though, I've done so many videos about other parts of town. You can click here and learn more about Hampton Roads, about Virginia Beach through Williamsburg. And if you are relocating to the area, I would love to help you. That's what I do. So you can also reach out to me. I've got my contact information in the description. You can do it at any point, and I'll do whatever I can to help you relocate to the area. And I will see you on the next video.